Hello everyone, today I will show you how to import a ground motion text file into ETAP software. Going to define, functions, time history, and we select here from file. We have other options here, I will select the first one and I will click add a new function. You need to prepare your text file before doing this step. I have prepared this text file, I have imported all of these except this one. As shown here, we need to know how many lines to skip. We need to skip these lines, therefore we need to skip 5 rows. And here we have the option to select time and function values, or if we have equal intervals, we can use this option. In this text file, I have the time is equally separated by a time step of 0.01 second, therefore I will use this one and I will put one here. Number of points per line, I want to read just one point which is the acceleration because here the time is equally separated and we need to skip 23 column. But keep in mind we have negative values, therefore we need to skip 22, I will skip 21 line. And from browse, we select the ground motion and we click open. And I will convert to user define. I prefer to convert to user define because if the text file is deleted for any reason, we don't lose any kind of information of the ground motion record. And as shown here, we have this option view response spectrum. And these are the spectrum for each ground motion as shown here. Actually, each ground motion have its own pseudo spectral acceleration. This is the response of the ground motion. You can here add maybe a different damping, for example 0.025. And as shown here, the black line is already added. You can delete these, for example. Also, you can export this one by going to File. The print data to file and I will name it for example spectra gm1 okay and okay this is all for this one and we should go to define load case add a new case we need to choose the type as time history Choose acceleration here. U1 mean in the x direction, U2 mean in the y direction. I will choose U1 for now. The function is GM1. I will name this GM1 in the x direction. And the scale factor here is gravity because here the acceleration values are divided by G. Therefore, we need to multiply again by gravity. Regarding the number of output time steps, we should go again to the text file, go to the end of this text file and copy this value which is the total time of the ground motion and divide by the time interval or time step. Actually this is the number of points in the text file. If we put the mouse here as shown, we have 32,000 points and you should subtract the first five lines and therefore you will get the same number here and regarding the last one which is output time step size this is just related to the output of the results etaps will provide you for example the results at each 0.1 second you can make it same as the ground motion record but it's not related to the time step used for computing the response it's just for the results and for the last one, model damping, I will specify a constant damping for all modes of 2.5%. I have defined all the ground motions for the X and for the Y direction. In the Y direction, just you need to use U2. And this is all for the load case. And normally when we are dealing with ground motions, we need the average response. I will define a load combination 
I will name it mean or average for the x direction. I will select the combination type as range add and just add all the ground motions for the x direction. Range add sums the maximum response from each ground motion. Therefore, I will say 1 over 6 just to take the average from each one. And in the same way, we do it for the y direction. We can copy this load combination. And this is all for the y direction. And OK. Lastly, I want to show you something about the responses spectrum here that is related to the ground motion. As shown, each ground motion has its own pseudo spectral acceleration, and we can compute this response manually. Going to Dynamics and Vibration book by Dr. Anil Shubra, chapter number 5. In this section, he shows some numerical techniques to evaluate the response. We need to solve this equation of motion. And here, this equation of motion is for an elastic system because the displacement is related to the stiffness. In linear system, similar to the one we are doing now in ETAPS, this term is replaced by KU. K is the stiffness matrix and U is the displacement vector. This is the first method, it's called interpolation. We have other methods like central difference method. This is a second numerical method, which is based on Taylor series. And the third one is called the new mark method. We can use this numerical method to compute the response of the structure. Actually, I'm showing you these methods because I will show you how to develop the response spectrum for each ground motion manually. I will go to this Excel sheet. The pseudo spectral acceleration or the response spectrum acceleration or the formation response spectrum or velocity or any type of thing because as shown here in the equation of motion, we have these terms. U double dot is the acceleration, U dot is the velocity, U is the displacement, and here the G terms mean the acceleration of the ground motion. And what you should know is, for a given ground motion, the deformation response of a single degree of freedom system depends on the natural frequency and damping ratio. The response UT, which is the displacement or the deformation, of a single degree of freedom system can be determined from a numerical procedure. For example, the one I have shown you in the book. The peak value of the formation time history response of n single degree of freedom system with a natural period Tn due to a particular ground excitation can be plotted as a point on the deformation response spectra. Therefore, for one single degree of freedom system that have one period, the deformation is just a point on this spectrum. Therefore, what we need to do is to solve the equation of motion for a single degree of freedom system with different period or different natural frequency. And this is what I have did in these sheets. As shown, I have give just a different period for each single degree of freedom system. I just compute the response using a numerical procedure. Here I'm using the interpolation this one shown in this table, the, these terms A, B, C, D, they are shown here. And I have compute the response of this single degree of freedom system. And lastly, the procedural spectral acceleration is just equal to the deformation or displacement multiplied by the natural frequency divided by gravity. And maximum A, this one, maximum velocity and maximum displacement. Therefore, if going back to this one, for period uh, of three second, maximum A is equal to sheet T n equal three and to cell D29, which is this one, T29.
therefore this one is just one point on this spectra however to obtain this point we need to do all of this we need to obtain the response of a single degree of freedom system due to a specific ground motion i'm trying just to give an overview about the meaning of this figure in etap software and i'm showing you this because i'm using consistent ground motion for comparison actually these spectra they have the same spectra that i have defined previously from here as shown here this is the shape of the response spectrum and if i go back to the time function if you click view response spectrum I will define a 2.5% damping because we are using the spectra for a 2.5% damping as shown here this spectra is just very similar to the response spectrum that I have defined previously therefore these ground motions are consistent and compatible to be used for comparison I want to compare the time history function with the response spectrum analysis and this is the end of this video and please continue the next one